In my social arbitrage video, I went a step further from my arbitrage video and give you an actual actionable strategy that virtually anyone can use in their day-to-day -day trading as long as you have any form of social network, which basically everyone does. If you have people on social media, they're gonna be posting about stuff. If you're talking to people in person, they're going to be talking about stuff. Maybe they're going to be talking about something that they just recently purchased, something that they're really interested in or fascinated by, or even if you have no friends, no social network, no matter what, but you're just going to the store, you're just going to a restaurant and you're noticing things that others are doing, even if they're not your friends, you can still build conviction or trading ideas from that data. But I think what a lot of people were struggling with is although they might say, okay, I do have friends who are purchasing stuff, I am noticing some trends in my personal life, I still want to have other ways of confirming these trades or at least coming up with ways to come up with these ideas or companies. It's very easy to go on YouTube and search up a YouTuber like Zip Trader or Dumb Money who's talking about a bunch of different companies and they're telling you how good these companies are, uh, but they're not actually telling you how they found these companies. And that's what keeps you reliant on them, right? You have to keep going back to their YouTube channel to see what the new company is because on your own, you're very much reliant on them. You can't go out and say, okay, starting from scratch, starting from zero on google.com, how do I find a good company to look into? And that's exactly what I hope to help you with in this video by using alternative data. So what is alternative data and why does it matter? Because at least for me, when I first started trading, alternative data was not something that I was thinking about whatsoever. Most people just talk about technical analysis and fundamental analysis. Alternative data is something completely different. So let's think about what insider trading is. Insider trading is basically whenever you get some form of information or data from inside a company that the rest of the public does not have access to. And that gives you some sort of edge over the market, right? Because you have that data and maybe it gives you some idea of, oh, okay, now that I know that the sales for this quarter is going to be X amount of dollars, then I have a much better idea than the rest of the market what this next quarter earnings are going to be. However, although insider trading is completely illegal and you shouldn't do it, there are ways of utilizing data that's available to the public to make an edge for yourself. So you don't necessarily need to have data or information that's exclusive to the people that work at the company in order to derive some sort of edge on a specific company. And so that's basically what alternative data is. If you think of some form of data that might help you with a company, for example, like Amazon, in terms of predicting how they've been doing over the past quarter, then that's what can give you an edge over the rest of the market because maybe they aren't looking at that data, which is why people don't talk about alternative data sources because if everyone said, you know, I'm looking at the commercial airline sales uh, on this specific website from this specific API, then everyone else would look at that too and then it would no longer become profitable. Um, but the data source that I'm talking about in this video is already widely known. However, the very important thing about data, once you get into these mass quantities, is how you're interpreting it. And so I'll go over all of this um, on the specific company because I love to work with examples as I think it's the easiest way to understand it. And so first let's start with how you are going to build that initial thesis to then do further research into. So let's say I'm using the social arbitrage mindset and I saw my friends have been going to CVS quite a bit over the past month or so. So I'm going to do more research on CVS and this is a company that I've noticed have earnings coming up. And personally, I'll just be fully transparent. I do have a position in CVS that expires right before the next quarterly earnings because I believe uh, through the research that I'll be showing you in this video, at least just from one data source, that this company is doing very well, at least before this next quarterly earnings. And you might be wondering, why is quarterly why are quarterly earnings so important it's because quarterly earnings tend to be when that information parity happens because no longer is the market just guessing how well or how poorly a company is doing now they know directly from the company what the numbers have been, what's going on, an update from the CEO, et cetera. And then that's going to move the price exactly to relatively where it should be priced at right after the earnings. Although that being said, there are still companies 
uh, don't get me wrong, there are still companies that I hold through multiple quarterly earnings that I still believe uh, have some sort of edge to them that the market's not fully taking into account. And that might be for multiple reasons, uh, but just in general, earnings tend to be a time where you want to reevaluate your position and still see if there's an edge that you have over what the rest of the market fully understands. So let's say that I have CVS and I came up with this idea somehow, and now I want to do some research. Well, a really good data source that you can use is Google Trends. And Google Trends is basically, uh, it's a data source for what people are searching on Google, and Google is the largest search engine in the world. So this gives you quite accurate data. So let's say I want to do research on CVS. What you can do on Google Trends is you can search pretty much any search term that you can think of, and then you can see some long-term data on that specific term. So here, if I'm looking at CVS, you can see that the Google Trends search traffic for this specific term has been relatively high. And there are a couple downsides to Google Trends being that it does not give you the exact number of how many people are searching for that specific term, or it doesn't really give you like super accurate data. Uh, it does give you this little chart here and it gives you a, a general idea of where people are searching from, uh, but it doesn't really go farther than that. But it's still very, very helpful because you can see here that while it doesn't give you the exact numbers for how many people are searching a specific term, it does give you the long-term trend compared to previous periods. And that's all you really need. You don't need to know exactly how many people are searching it, just how many people are searching it how many people are searching it now compared to how many people were searching it, uh, for example, last year on this specific day. So here we can see on CVS that it has been doing abnormally well compared to prior trends, especially this year during COVID-19 and the current quarter that it's in. And of course you can just search the company by itself, uh, but then you can go a little bit farther into it. Maybe if you want to look up pharmacy uh, near me or something like this, you can think of all these terms that might influence a specific company such as CVS or whatever company you're doing research on. Um, and then the more terms that you can sort of accumulate and build an idea of, okay, maybe people are going to CVS more than before, especially for this specific quarter, then you can start to build conviction on that trade. Or if you have a trading idea that is somehow not confirmed anymore, so maybe you're looking up a CVS term like uh, CVS food or whatever it may be, and you're seeing and you're saying, okay, actually CVS food doesn't look like it's really spiking at all. There's not a very strong trend there. Uh, then maybe you will tr find that your trading thesis is not correct or it's already priced into the market. Uh, but whenever you can find terms that you don't think are accurately priced into the market that will have a large effect on the next quarter earnings or on the company long term, then this is where you can start to build that thesis and start to gain some research for the specific company that you're looking at. And as I mentioned before, this is just one data source. Google Trends is extremely powerful. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot you can do with it, but you can also think of other data sources that you want to use and how you can interpret that data source uh, to then later execute your trades. Just an example, if you're really focusing on social arbitrage and you have a really good idea of how you can utilize social network data to build trades, then maybe you can look at Twitter data or maybe you can look at Instagram data, TikTok data, whatever it may be. Maybe you wanna look at the hashtags for specific companies on TikTok and monitor how that's doing over time. And then maybe you may be able to identify a trend for example, for a specific clothing company like The Gap or Lululemon, um, and then enter that trade in the market before the rest of the market sees it from the earnings or just from people starting to notice the trend later after you've already viewed it from your alternative data. Once again, the two most important things for alternative data is the data source that you're using because the more difficult the data source is to access, uh, the more of an edge you are likely to derive from it. And that's why social arbitrage is so valuable because if you're a single individual, you already have an advantage over every automated system. Because while an automated system can go on Google Trends and search for CVS and see, okay, it's doing 20% better than it was last year, it, it doesn't really have any context for that. If I'm an individual and not an automated machine that's doing research on these companies, I can then see these Google Trends that validates my initial thesis, but then do further research by, for example, calling CVS and asking, you know, how many people are coming into CVS this year uh, compared to prior years? Have you seen a spike 
uh, in, the num in the number of customers that you've been having at the store, et cetera. And that's something that no automated system will ever be able to do because the one-on-one -on -one human contact is so hard to collect on a mass scale that there's no way for an automated system to do it unless you're one specific individual. And that's just an example of one data source uh, that you can use that no automated system can use that gives you an edge over the rest of the market. So that's just one example of how powerful alternative data can become. And as you start to expand the number of data sources that you're looking at, the way that you're interpreting data, um, or even if you just want to stick to Google Trends, it can really help you in the long term building your edge in the financial markets. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to join my Discord where I plan to share any tips or tricks that I find for alternative data. Or if you have any questions about alternative data or different data sources to use or how you can interpret it, make sure to ask them and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and see you in the next one.